What is up guys? It's another week, another video, and another five Fridays. In this week, we're going to talk about binging, and more specifically, I'm going to give you five tips on how to prevent binging. So sit back, relax, get your asses ready to learn, and let's cue the intro and get into it. Tip number one, clear out your cupboards. If you're anything like me, having junk food stored at home where it's easily within reach is just asking for a Friday night binge eating session or also mindlessly watching everything and anything that's on Netflix because that's what I do on Fridays. Now I understand if you have kids or if you've paid for all this food, it's gonna be very hard to just throw it away because you're essentially throwing away money. But at the end of the day, you cannot pay for a good or healthy body or physique um, and that's what you're putting in danger by storing this type of food at your house now having a little bit of it is completely fine but it's when you have an abundance of it and it's just it becomes much easier to reach for some junk food and have a crack night than it is to go to the inconvenience of making a meal or spending 45 minutes preparing food when there's a pack of galaxy cookies in the cupboard that you could have for dinner instead. But to be fair, who has galaxy cookies for dinner? That's a dessert. With ice cream, Ben and Jerry's. The best thing ever. So guys, just go in your cupboards and throw out or get rid of, give away to friends, to anyone. Go give it to homeless people, for Christ's sake. Just get rid of a lot of the temptation that's in your cupboards. So this could be your chocolate spreads or your pizzas or your sauces, if it's low calories, it's completely fine. And also any form of fizzy drink or energy drink that isn't zero calorie or zero sugars. Thank you. Tip number two, if you're gonna binge, at least have a damage control plan ready. Now we are human and there will come a point in time where we are going to screw up on our diets or our eating plans. It's inevitable. But it's important to notice these early enough so that we can implement some methods and prevent how much damage we're actually going to cause. Hence, damage control. Okay, for instance, it's Tuesday night, and you know on Friday you and a bunch of friends are going to a bar or a club and you're gonna have a few drinks and maybe get a kebab afterwards. For the next two days, Wednesday and Thursday, all you would do is reduce the amount of calories you actually have. If you go to the gym, add in an extra cardio session, maybe an extra 15, 20 minutes, and just buffer yourself and put yourself in a much bigger deficit than usual so that when it comes to having drinks and some crap food on a Friday night, you've not actually exceeded your weekly caloric intake in turn keeping you in your diet. So if you are a creature of the social variety, I wouldn't have any idea what that's like, and you find yourself going out quite a lot, implement these sort of steps um, to just prevent how much weight gain you're actually going to do, if any. But this method can be used for anything. If you're going to a birthday party, if you're just going out to dinner with some friends, if you're going to family events, just be sure that you prepare your body and buffer yourself beforehand so when it comes to that date, you don't have to feel guilty about having nice foods or enjoying yourself, okay? It's all about fitting the gym around your lifestyle and not the other way around. Tip number three is get up and get yourself busy. Now how many of us, or how many of you more specifically, actually eat because you're hungry or do you binge eat because you're bored? Me, I find myself tucking into a chocolate cake or some cookies mainly when I'm bored, not because I'm actually hungry. Diving into a chocolate cake seems a lot more enjoyable than just sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. And this is the issue of food. We give it an emotional attachment. We associate food with enjoyment. We've given it that emotional bond. And this is why we find ourselves tucking into crap foods when we've had a stressful day at work or whenever we find ourselves bored or upset because eating junk food just makes us feel better. There's no wrong or reason, it's just how it works. But the idea is if we're out and we're busy and we're doing stuff and we're actually being productive, we're gonna have less reason to binge because there's going to be less reasons to feel bored. So, get outside, get to a park, go to the gym, go see your friends, go see your family, go do whatever you want, just keep your mind 
or feeding. And it's easier said than done, but, but just get used to it, get yourself used to being busy, and you'll find yourself actually not wanting to binge. Tip number four, volumise your meals. I'll put two meals on the screen. One is a bag of rice and some chicken, and the other one is some strawberries, some bread, I can't remember the exact meal, but it's below 500 calories. Now, see the macro breakdowns for each of these meals. You'll see that one contains vastly more calories than the other. And this is because at the beginning of prep, I wasn't going for volumized meals. I was going for what I what I wanted, what was nice. And this was in the form of some Mexican rice with some chicken. Now that I'm nine weeks into a prep and my calories are relatively low, I have to be smart with my meals and I have to make myself feel full. Now, you don't get full on the amount of calories that you eat, you get full on how much you can fill your stomach up on the littlest amount of calories ever. So, I would take, hands down, the meal that has 500 calories in, but it's three plates worth, then one bag of rice and a bit of chicken. The only issue you find with this is if you're not a fan of fruit and vegetables, you're gonna kind of have to become adjust to eating them because they are the best way to bulk up your meals. And there's a ton of foods that you can buy to do this. If you go into your local supermarket or your local shop, just give a look around for low calorie foods that you could just use to bulk up other meals. So if you're having a salad, just put some lettuce or some spinach in there with some mixed peppers or some low calorie couscous broccoli couscous that we do here in England. So just try and be more smart with your meals. Try and get the most amount of food for the least amount of calories that you can. It, it will take a bit of time and a bit of looking around, but trust me, you will do it, and once you start doing it, you'll be able to have up to like four or five meals a day that look incredibly big, that are ridiculously low in calories, but leave you full. And lastly, implement flexible dieting into your day-to-day food choices. If you don't know what flexible dieting is, flexible dieting is the idea that no food is forbidden or excluded from an eating or diet plan. As long as it fits within your calories and as long as it fits within your macros, you are allowed to have it. Now I'm not going to dive too deep on that in this video. If you do want to go find out more about flexible dieting, if you're not accustomed to it, there'll be a link in the description to a video by Matty Fasaro that I also linked in the last video. He gives a brief and in-depth explanation of it. But the benefit that flexible diet will have on preventing you binging is you're not going to starve yourself of nice foods that you enjoy. You can you can fit in some cookies or some pop tarts, any food that you want within moderation, but you will be able to fit it in. This is going to prevent you from craving it at a, a much bigger quantity. So if you can have a little bit of ice cream every single day or an ice cream sandwich every single day or a pop tart every single day, you're not gonna wanna binge on it on the weekends and end up consuming 5,000 calories of just crap foods because you've had a steady, steady, uh, a steady amount of it throughout the week. Flexible diet massively caps and I'm a massive advocate of it. I'm nine weeks into prep and I still implement flexible dieting into my day-to-day -day food routine, you could say. It's a lot harder now because I'm a lot on a lot lower calories, but it is possible, massively. So guys, we're gonna bring the video to an end now. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you have any other tips or suggestions for anyone else or for myself, leave it in the comments section below. And as always, I will see you next Friday for another Five Fridays episode. And it's gonna be a good one. We're gonna go over five fitness myths and I can't wait to do it. It's going to be hilarious to debunk them and see your guys' response to it as well. So until next time, catch you later! I'll see you later to figure out that. That was pretty fucking stupid. Bye. I do that every time. And I need to stop. I need to think of something less nerdy. Every Friday. Funnily enough, I have a Netflix account I don't actually use. Just paying money for something I don't use. Still, it's better than paying money on junk food. And ruining your diet.